Hello, hello. I hope you've had a very, very pleasant day or evening, wherever you are. Thank you for tuning in to this series of videos on A Course in Miracles. I'm Tomas Garza. Another beautiful idea for us to consider today. And in the meantime, we're going to be talking about contractual relations. So uh, yeah, that's my hint. It's my preview. And the idea for today is lesson 287 here in the workbook, which reads, you are my goal, my father, only you. You are my goal, my father, only you. The peace of God, in other words, our identity, capital I, of course. Yeah, that's our only goal. So if you're following along in the workbook, or if you've done this before, and I know that a number of you have been through the entirety of the workbook more than once, a number of you have done that. So let me recall lesson 185 and the commentary that accompanies that. And lesson 185 is, I want the peace of God. Now, in the thought system of A Course in Miracles, we're given to understand that what that idea means is we want nothing else. <laughs> we want the peace of God and nothing else. So here we are, 102 ideas later, with one idea that supports another. And Jesus has presented this workbook in this way so that we get precisely this reinforcement because as adult learners, let's, let's face it, sometimes we have short attention spans, don't we? Sometimes we think an idea sounds great one minute and then because we're used to the up and down lack of flow of the ego mindset, we're carried away the next minute and we change our minds and we think that something that sounded brilliant 10 minutes ago and yeah, like the truth, I can relate to that. Suddenly we don't relate to it anymore and we can think of dozens of reasons why not, <laughs> right? I mean, we can all relate to this. So this is why we see ideas over and over again in different forms. So I want the peace of God, in other words, I want only the peace of God, is another way of saying, you are my goal, my father, only you. I want the peace of God. Heaven, in other words, the experience of the oneness with God. It's, it's really not a place, just like hell isn't a place because there's no place. There's no place relative to another place. That is duality. That's the world we live in where one place is exists supposedly, right? We have agreed that one thing called a place exists apart from and separate from other places. So heaven is not a place, it's not a garden under which rivers flow in the physical sense of the word. It's not a castle in the sky either. It's so much more than all of that because it's not dependent on a place at all. It's not dependent on time, it's eternity. And it is our natural state, which is our goal. I mean, really, truly, really, truly, when you think about it, why else would you be doing a spiritual path? You know, I mean, have you ever taken a few minutes or a few decades <laughs> and thought about that? Why am I doing this anyway? What? am I hoping to accomplish here? What is my goal? And I'm not talking goal orientation in the business sense of the word where modern society 
rewards people that claim that they're goal oriented, that they want the next shiny object, that they want the next biggest and newest car, the hottest new romantic partner, right? that promotion at work, right? We're not talking goal orientation in that way. We're talking about directing the mind within. We're talking about shedding all of the extraneous drama. And while it's important in the world that we have a roof over our heads, it's important that we keep the light bill on so the wireless router continues to work and we can continue to reach people worldwide on YouTube, like I'm doing right now. All those things are important, right? Food is important. Yeah. Yeah, depending on where you live, a car could be extremely important. I live in Phoenix, Arizona. It's extremely important. Yeah, it's hard to do anything without it. Right? So uh, you may or may not live in a location where that's the case, but you know, while we appear to be here, we most definitely should make sure that our communication mechanism, what you see right now wearing this thing called a red shirt, is able to function at its highest and best to heal the Son of God. What other purpose is there, really? So when we're talking about a goal in this sense, we're talking about letting go of all the other goals and wanting only the peace of God. It's a different kind of goal. It's the only one that's real. So, in our world, I mentioned at the top that I was going to be talking about contractual relations. Our goal here in the world is very rarely the peace of God, isn't it? If we really are honest about all of it, we engage in contractual relations with each other all the time. Our life here in the world is transactional. It's very much a series of transactions. A relationship is a transaction, the way we put it forward in the world. That marriage is a transaction. Business deals are transactions. And buying a car is a transaction. Buying a house is a transaction. Making a rent payment is a transaction. Buying groceries is a transaction. And that's just in the sense of monetary transactions. In the world, we love people with conditions, don't we? That's a transaction. We agree to join for a limited period of time to get together and do a business deal. We agree to join for a limited period of time because we may have a common ally and common enemies, and we may choose to work together for a limited time. We may choose to spend the night with each other and never see each other again. We may choose to spend a hot, sexy weekend with each other and never see each other again. The world is full of examples like this where we join with people under certain terms and conditions, and then we reserve the right to end the relationship, don't we? When you honestly think about it, every human interaction that's based on a sense of separation involves a quid pro quo. It involves an agreement, a tacit agreement, whether it's spoken or unspoken, whether it's even conscious or not. It involves an agreement on 
the rules, the parameters. Rules and parameters that we impose on joining with our brother and sister are limitations. They're forms of specialness, like I've talked about here, and we see again and again in A Course in Miracles on forgiveness. It's not total. Joining for, or forgiveness, love, is either total or it's not at all. That's why we're invited and encouraged on the spiritual path to pursue the only goal that matters, the peace of God. So I hope that you take some comfort in these words and maybe some inspiration. And to be honest, if any of these videos has provided you with that swift kick in the rear to jumpstart, a forgiveness practice to jumpstart your spiritual walk that may or may not have stalled, right? If any of this provides you with that impetus and motivation, then I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. Because I can't walk the walk for you. I'm here to heal the Son of God. I'm here to offer healing words, healing energy, and healing space to you, where you can go through whatever process you need to go through to get to the point where this is all you want, where God, your identity, love, is your only goal, and that is all that you want. It's what I'm here for, to help you and guide you on that journey. That's what we're all here for. So no matter what outward physical manifestation this takes, whatever you do for a living, or you know, whatever you did for a living, if you're retired and you're no longer in that kind of active sort of work, career sort of position, Whatever your station is right now in life, we're invited and encouraged to want only the peace of God. And when that's all that you want, what do you see? What do you experience? <laughs> yeah, relaxing, isn't it? All right, guys, we'll see you back here on the next video. And thank you, as always, for joining me.